What's up fellow gamers, my name is Brett, and this is the Nerf Gaming Combo Set. This is a real product that really exists, and you can go out and buy it for real money. Like I did, for 25 United States dollars. And if this sticker is to be believed, it used to cost 40 bucks. Cool. Also, apparently this came out in 2021. Where? When in 2021? I don't know. I only found out this existed like a week ago. So thanks Ross, dress for less, now I have one. And we're gonna talk about it today. Funny story is that once I found out that this thing existed, I went to all of my local Rosses to see if I could find one. And once I finally did, and I was checking out, the lady looked at me and was like, oh, that looks like fun. And I was like, what if I told you that I was here explicitly to find this product? And she looked at me like she wasn't really sure if I was joking or being serious. I definitely wasn't joking. And now I, I kind of wish I was joking. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's take a look at this box before we get inside to the contents because the box is making some interesting claims. And I want to know if that's exactly what I expect when I open it. Obviously, it's showing off the keyboard, the mouse, and the headset. Level up your gaming, light up the action with Nerf. So we can expect some light up action in here with the gaming combo set. Includes keyboard, headset, and gaming mouse. Excellent. Some interesting new style Nerf logos on the side saying the exact same thing. A lot of movement inside. I guess we'll find out how secure it is in a second. Nerf. And then on the back, of course, we've got, oh, first on the side. Check that out. That's what I hope to look like in a minute or two. On the back, we've got the interesting stuff. So we've got Nerf gaming combo set, pro gaming keyboard, gaming mouse, and headset. And we can take a look at some of the things that they're claiming there. Of course, we've got LED backlit keys offer the responsiveness of a mechanical keyboard with the comfort of a gaming keyboard. I think that means that they're not committing to what this actually is. They're not saying that it's a mechanical keyboard or a gaming keyboard, but <laughs> yeah, you guys can read some of that if you're interested. It says at 2021, Sakar International. Sakar International. This said it existed in 2021, never heard of it. Again, the same stylings there, and there is your level up gaming. Heck yes. I think we've looked at the box thoroughly enough. God, that does not sound good. Let's, let's open it up. I already removed the tape on these sides and the bottom. What do we get inside? Well, hopefully we get all three. I would be very disappointed if uh, something was missing. Oh, gee. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> the keyboard was just floating on top. Well, good news, we get some instructions. Please focus on the instructions. The gaming combo set, headset gaming mouse and pro gaming keyboard what the heck gaming keyboard gaming mouse and just headset so these things are definitely gamer approved but the headset mm, we'll have to look into that just the functions again same old same old cool uh, <laughs> oh my gosh it's already dirty <laughs> oh my oh gee i need to show you guys all right taking it out for the first time Oh my gosh, it's as light as a feather. This is amazing. It's exactly what you would have expected, right? It's a Nerf keyboard, a pro gaming Nerf keyboard. <laughs> There's a Nerf right there, Nerf on the space bar. Oh, the space bar is so sticky. <laughs> I, I can't. Okay, let me show you what I, what I saw immediately. Can you guys see that? The keys are dirty. The, the J, the K, the H, there's like black speckles on the side of them. I'm gonna have to try and clean this in a second with like a wipe, but yeah, it's like already kind of scuffed up. I'm sorry, that thickness is just non-existent. This is of course like plastic. There's a little bit of rubber on the bottom. Flip, flip, ta-da. So it can slightly sit at an angle. Oh my gosh. Ah, uh, beautiful. Absolutely everything I had hoped and dreamed of. Okay, what's next? Let's get to our headset, not our gaming headset because that's not what this is. Okay, all right, they're white. They're um, high quality, definitely. You can swivel, oh, you can only swivel that to one side. 
Okay. So I guess this is going on my head like that, but it's got Nerf logos on it. Thank goodness. I wouldn't have known otherwise. This can adjust ever so slightly. I think this will still fit my head just fine because my head's pretty small, but I'm going to assume I know people who will not be able to fit into this headset. We've got our cable, red and green. Okay, cool. And then we've got our mouse, which is also super, super light. You got a big old Nerf on that mouse as would be uh, expected as well. DPI button right there. At least that's what they say. Scroll, scroll. Ooh, that feels great. 2021 Hasbro, all rights reserved. Now that's what I want on the bottom of my mouse. I don't know about you guys. And nothing on the sides. Holy crap. My hand is small, but look how big my hand is compared to this freaking mouse. I'm sorry to all my friends who are slightly larger than me. This mouse will be unusable for you. Or at least that's what I'm assuming. I shouldn't assume, you guys will adapt. I don't think there's anything more I can do just by showing you here. We have to actually hook this up and see if it's all cracked up to what the box claims it is. Cause this is gonna take my gaming to the next level. Hello. I plugged in the keyboard, I plugged in the mouse. Initial thoughts are eh, kinda mixed. I'm going to use both the keyboard and the mouse to edit a different video. And then I'll come back to you later with my user experience. I'm also going to use them to play one of my favorite Nerf related games. If you know, you know. I will give my initial impressions though, is that the keys are weird. They're like some that are stickier than others. And also it's dirtier now that I have the RGB going on the keyboard. So that's beautiful. Now that I can see it in front of me, it's even more scratched up than I thought initially. Cool, love that, buyer beware. At least um, it seems to work, but yes, the RGB is just on or off, off, on. And the mouse is, as soon as you plug it in, it's on. The mouse seems to be okay initially. It works, obviously you can change the DPI. What was it, between 800, 1200 DPI resolution. Um, it obviously doesn't tell you what it's at, so you kind of have to trial and error it. The scrolling wheel seems to work okay. It's, I, I was mean by saying it was probably too small. I think this fits my hand just fine. It's just very, very light. So initially when I felt that, I was like, oh, that's kind of strange. In the meantime, we have one more product that uh, we can at least test fit as it stands. And one other little difference that I just picked up on, this is a white cord. The mouse uses a white cord and the keyboard is a black cord, which is completely different. I don't know why they didn't color coordinate those. It seems like it would have made sense for a set, but I'm obviously not the person who was in charge. So if I'm going to test fit these on, oh boy, I have them at half setting right now. Oh, it's so stiff. Ow, <laughs> frick, I shouldn't have done that. I also can't hear anything now. I guess they're working. Wow, if I flip this down, Oh, oh, it's, it's so far away. I mean, maybe over time it'll get a little less intense on my ears. My ears are somewhat sensitive because they're a bit pointy at the end. So whenever I cup over them, I often feel a little bit of discomfort. So I don't know if I'm the best person to gauge whether these are comfortable or not. Uh, they can be bigger, so they fit my head okay as it stands with room to go even bigger. So I'd be curious to see what the maximum size head is. For a kid's sake, it's going to be fine then, I would suppose, just like this will be long enough for a kid to use. Now I'm going to test the audio of this thing. I'm not just gonna try to plug this into my camera. I'm going to get a small streaming setup like I normally would. I've never claimed to be like a high quality video professional with like the highest quality camera settings and audio, but I'd like to imagine that it's decent enough where you can understand what I'm saying. Sorry, have I been speaking louder this whole time? I couldn't tell. I guess they're kind of working in that regard, but, ooh, yeah, my ears kind of hurt. <laughs> That's some strong cupping you got right there, Nerf. Thanks for that. All right, test number one. This might be my more typical streaming setup. I've got my Shure MV7 microphone right in front of my face, so hopefully the audio is loud enough, but it's probably pretty clear. There's probably some specific things I could dial in to make it even better, but in its current state, I would expect it to be a perfectly usable audio source. I muted the audio in this game. Uh, shout out to whoever can recognize this game. You're about to, oh shoot, that, that spoils it. You're not hearing anything except for just me. And I think this would be perfectly passable audio. Next, I've got my typical gaming headphones, simple but effective. These are Nubwo's, Nubwo's, N-U-B-W-O. 
Michelle from Phone Blast recommended I check these out, and they're really nice and affordable. They're like 20, 25 bucks. They're wired in, so, you know, not wireless, but the cup fits my head really nicely. As I mentioned, I have a bit of a problem with my ears getting really sensitive if the cup doesn't work effectively, which is why I typically like putting earbuds in, but these work nice. They're pretty big. That might be a drawback for some people. And obviously, if I move this closer, you can hear me better. If it's too far away, it might be bad. And it sticks relatively easily. It's obviously dependent on how effective I am at making sure that's in the right spot or not. I've streamed with these before. I like them. There is a bit of a piece that's getting keyed out that you won't necessarily see the whole time. Also a small maybe drawback for some people, but again, affordable headphones. They work. I like them. They're comfortable. They're nice when I'm playing games. Now we've got a simple, cheap, wired pair of Plantronics, specifically Blackwire C320-M. This is what you get day one of work because that's that's how I got these. I mean, they work when you need them to work. They're not the comfiest around my ears. They're definitely not cupping, but that's not what they're trying to do. At least this can move from one side to the other, so you can wear it on the left side of your head or the right. What was I expecting? Good quality audio? No, you can hear me. That's, I guess, all that really matters. Woo. Last but not least, all right, time for the main attraction. Our Nerf headset is officially on. I don't think that's as long as the previous ones I was testing, so I'm going to assume it's quieter. I don't know if that means, though, that it's going to be worse audio. A quick check made me believe it wasn't, so that's a good sign. This is still pretty tight around my ears. My head is not huge. It's kind of funny, you can't even tell like it's Nerf themed unless you get the right side that has the Nerf logo on it. So like if I'm just looking at you like this, they're probably just a regular pair of weird white headphones. Those are darts. Yo, what's up, Nerf Nation? It's your boy, the real Mr. Burt420, back with another exciting Nerf Legends playthrough. We are in one of the last levels before the big epic final boss fight. Of course, I've got my Ultra One, my Talon, and my Mega Centurion ready to go. This is how I'm going to dominate my opponents in this level. I am also using some extra cheats this time, but don't tell anyone. I'm using my epic Nerf headset. It's not a gaming headset, it's just, just a headset, but it's got Nerf on it, which means I can hear all the enemies before they even know I'm coming. I'm also using this high-tech gaming Nerf keyboard. Right now I've got the lights on so I can see all the buttons. I'm also using a RGB Nerf mouse so that I can effectively uh, click, click, clack uh, before my enemies ever do themselves. I also just have to find all these enemies. I forget I can double jump. Uh, this game apparently was patched recently, and I'm not seeing that. This, uh, this new tech of mine might be considered cheating by some, but for me, a real Nerf champion, a real Nerf legend playing Nerf Legends, it's only fair, in my opinion. I can feel the keyboard is super responsive, and I know that my enemies are hearing me with as much clarity as you guys are who are watching my stream right now. This space bar is really sticky. I mean, this space bar is amazing. Almost as amazing as this space style level, or this hangar, because this is not space, this is a hangar. Ow, jeez. Ah, god, you know what? It's starting to get to me.
Welcome back, friends. New day, new me. But no, still no beret because if they don't try, neither do I. I've put all three products through their paces for the better part of 24 hours. Let's talk about my user experience and if I would recommend this set for you to go out and purchase. Also, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you. Consider joining the Burt Zone by getting a commemorative t-shirt from Silver Fox Industries. Link in the description box below. Help Burt support his family. <laughs> For a limited time only. All these products are obviously on the cheaper side and if you haven't picked up on that then I recommend going back and starting the beginning of this video. The way they were packaged I think is probably one of the worst aspects of this whole box. I really wish that these things were actually protected better especially the keyboard. I was able to get some of the scuff marks off but there are still scratches on this keyboard that you can't unscuff. So that kind of sucks. Let's work our way back again from the headset. I was decently surprised with the audio on this when it was plugged in correctly. The transfer cables, they worked fine. Um, again, when I plugged them in correctly and plugged them into the headset, I will say, as I mentioned previously, this is a weird fit for my head. It's very, very tight. This is a C-clamp, not a headset. That will take some extra time for it to work effectively. That's pretty tight. My brain's going to mush right now, but you know what? It works. This is really short, but when I up the audio a little bit, it seems that the audio is decently clear. That little static was just because of my initial testing. This is obviously pretty cheap plastic. The cups aren't going to be super high quality. I don't know if this is going to last for the better part of a year. My initial testing says it worked today and it worked yesterday. So that's all I can tell you in the meantime. I did test this on a call with my good friend Ryan at Silver Fox Industries. So he did confirm that there was a little bit more bass. Interesting though, I know I've seen another Nerf headset from like Target and I'm pretty sure it's different than this. Let alone, it's, it's just different from the color perspective. I thought that was like 20 bucks on its own. This one being in a bundle for like 25? I mean, at least it's not that egregious. Still, I'd be very curious to see this fit on other people's heads. Moving on to the keyboard and mouse. So I used the keyboard and the mouse for some epic gaming, for some epic video editing. I actually edited the first part of this video and something else with this keyboard mouse in a thumbnail. I played Halo Infinite. I played Bean Battles. I played Nerf Legends. I think I've tested everything I need to test. The mouse is okay. The mouse is still very light, and I know some people might like a lighter mouse. I just felt like it was sliding too far, like I was gonna knock it off my uh, table if I wasn't too careful. It does suck that there aren't buttons on the side, as I mentioned earlier. It's just your left and right, a scroll wheel and a DPI adjustment. To that point as well, the instructions here on the mouse call out 800-1200 DPI resolution, making me think that maybe there's some other settings between 800 and 1200, but then the box says on the very back, DPI 800 comma 1200. I'm holding that like you can see it. I'm more likely to believe that it's just those two settings because that's all I've seemingly been able to find. So that felt a little misleading, but for that reason, because there's only two adjustments for your DPI on the mouse and no side buttons, I don't know if I'd recommend this as a gaming mouse, even though that's exactly what they call it. I think for casual use, this mouse might be okay. A decent little click. And hopefully from the video footage I had of this guy when it's actually plugged in, compared to what it shows on the instructions and on the box, it doesn't have multicolors on the mouse, it, it just cycles through colors, which is a bit misleading because it shows like, oh, there's the mouse, it's got all the rainbow colors all at once. That's, that's not the case. It shines through, it's a little cheap looking again, but just for your average basic mouse, I suppose it gets the job done. And hello, Mr. Keyboard. Would you like to add anything to the conversation? This keyboard is a membrane keyboard. It is not a mechanical one, but again, it never claims to be. The box was very clever. The worst part of the keyboard though is unfortunately a very crucial part. This space bar is really, really sticky. I even just, just right there, I, I hit it and it did not come back all the way. It takes a while sometimes for it to return to its previous form. I'm sure over time that might start showing as a negative. I mean, it's already a negative, but it just kind of sucks. And yes, that is one of the keys that was scratched initially. For that reason, playing games with this was not exactly the best experience. Here, 
if you want to hear some clacking. Ooh, the shift key is like a lot more responsive. Spacebar just happens to be the worst, which is one that you constantly, constantly use. And look how big it is. Look how big that freaking spacebar is. Why did they make it so extra big so it could fit two Nerf logos in it? That's so bizarre, I don't get it. Again, scroll lock is only going to turn the RGB on and off, as it's also mentioned, I think on the box, it's all backlit, the keys are not individually lit. It's just the whole board, as you probably saw, and you're gonna like that or you're gonna hate it. Well, they're not lying, that's the point. It works, I just don't see myself using this on a day-to-day -day basis, especially not for gaming. I didn't find any dead buttons, so that's good. I would much rather use something that has a lot more response, especially when I'm gaming, as this, uh, you know, it says Pro Gaming Keyboard. You lied to me. So if I had to rank these products, I guess I'd give number one to the mouse because it's just the least offensive, it's simple. Second would be the headset because it seems to work all right. I hope just in time it would get a little bit more comfortable. I've just plugged it in before listening to stuff and it seemed to do the job just fine. And then last place would be the keyboard. It is a very soft boy and I, I don't love it, but it's usable. And wrapping it all together, would I recommend you go out and get yourself a gaming combo set by Nerf? At 40 bucks, it's definitely less interesting. But at 25, I mean, you get three things, the mouse, the keyboard, the headset. You obviously knew that these were not going to be high quality products. If any of them were defective, like completely unusable, that would be a different story. But currently they work. I'm not gonna say that I'm disappointed in my purchase. I definitely don't know if these are going to last for a long, long while. I do hate that this product kinda is trying to hide under the guise of, well, it's for kids, so it's not a big deal if it sucks, because that's no excuse. I do wish that Nerf would maybe next time collaborate with a more reputable brand to make a really cool keyboard or mouse. And I shouldn't even say make, just throwing their brand or their logo, their colors on there, because that's one of the beautiful things about Nerf. They have such flashy, recognizable colors, and Nerf knows that there is an older demographic that likes their retro stylings or even just their modern stylings. And even this blue, orange and white does lend itself to a pretty overall package that I think makes this kind of product desirable. Maybe that's a more niche market that I don't understand, but I do think regardless of age, whether you're young or old, you should have a decent gaming setup if you're interested. And calling this a gaming combo set with really, really cheap products that aren't actually going to perform up to snuff is a bit deceiving. And even kids deserve a better gaming setup if they're looking to play some games. And with all that being said, I pass the question to you guys. What do you think of the Nerf gaming combo set? Do you wanna buy one yourself? Or is this an absolutely do not buy ever? I'd love to hear from you in the comment section down below. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Subscribe for more gaming reviews from Nerf. Do they even have any like more stuff that fits in this category? They probably do. I don't want to buy that. I've already got everything I need right here. It's a three in one deal. I will see you next time. I can't hear anything. <laughs> the world is better with a pair of Nerf headphones. Da da da.